What's up y'all? This is Daniel. We're proud of the Southland Kennels. We got an update video for y'all today. I got several things to do around the property. And I may have y'all follow me around. We got a breeding that we're going to try to get done. Uh, but there's more to this than dogs. And this has been on my heart here lately and I, I think it's time for me to share it. Um, we got to put God first in everything. And when I say God, I'm, I mean the one and only God, the God that sent his son Jesus Christ to die on the cross for us. Who, who paid all the debt for our sins. A lot of people don't understand um, what it means to be saved and how to, go, how to go about it. But it's real simple. You, uh, you believe that Jesus died on the cross for our sins and you repent, confess your sins, and you change your ways. And you don't have to do, you don't have to do that on your own. Uh, accepting Jesus Christ in your heart, he will, he will put the Holy Spirit in you and help you and give you the power and strength that you need to change your ways. And we're always going to come up short. I'm going to come up short today. I came up short yesterday and I'm going to come up short tomorrow. But we just have to keep believing and keep our faith and stay in the word and stay in the scriptures and understand things. Uh, make no mistake about it. Jesus Christ is coming back. And when he comes back, you need to make sure that you're on the right side. Uh, you need to make sure that you're saved and that you believe. Uh, and today I wanted to go around and maybe show you how I, how I know that there's a few examples that, that God created the heavens and the earth. And um, one of the most powerful and popular verses of all time is John 3.16. And that really pretty much sums it up. I never really understood or, or took the time to, to think about it. You know, I say that and... Uh, I'm ashamed of it, but that's just the truth, you know, and that's John 3, 16. It's, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believe in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. And everlasting life, that means eternity in heaven. And uh, the alternative to that is eternity in hell. And uh, we don't want that uh, because that's torment and torture as far as you could ever imagine. And uh, we don't want that, and I don't want to see anybody do that. And so uh, I just thought I'd share the word. And I'm going to try to show you, y'all, like I said, a few examples of uh, why I believe and, and why I do what I do. You know, there's more to this than just dogs. Um, I have chickens, goats, and we raise hogs from time to time. And we raise a garden. we got fruit trees. And uh, through all of that, I see the existence of God, so I just wanted to share with y'all what I see and how I see it. And one of the first examples right here is these chickens. These chickens will eat the bugs, the insects, uh, worms. They'll eat a little bit of the grass. Um, they'll eat grain that comes from the ground. And when they do that, they get enough protein and resources in their body that eventually will lay an egg. They lay them in the floor of the coop sometimes, so I'm going to grab one of these eggs and show you something else. Now, we take that egg that we get, and we can either eat it, eat scrambled eggs, eat fried eggs, eat deviled eggs, eat hard-boiled eggs, whatever. Or, we can choose to let the, the hen sit on it if it's a breed that'll go broody, or we can incubate it for 21 days, give or take a day or two. And then we have these little things right here. We have this one right here is a hen, so she'll grow up to lay more eggs. So we want to keep her around if we can. But this guy right here, the lighter colored ones, like that one with his white on his head, that's a rooster. We could keep him too if we wanted um, to keep fertilizing the eggs in the future. But you only need for this breed, especially one rooster for 10 hens. So we can, we can let him grow up and use him for meat. And to me, it's a life cycle. That's a, that's a proof of existence of God. Now, I know a bunch of smart people, but I don't know a man or a woman that would have been able to create a chicken to lay an egg and be multiple sources of food just in this one egg right here. There's, there's several different ways we can go about it. Now, like I said, I don't know anybody smart enough on this earth that could do that. With God... He's the Alpha and Omega. He is as far back as we can 
ever possibly imagine and as far forward as we could ever poss possibly imagine. He's never ending. And I want to go take him and show you another example, how I believe. There's Laurel, there's our female that we're planning on breeding and here we are with the goats. So we'll take a look at this little small pasture here. These goats, they'll eat this stuff, right? They'll eat it to nourish their bodies. Eventually, I know this is gross, but this is this is the way stuff works. This is their their droppings. That'll age and sit there long enough to to actually fertilize the soil so that this continues to grow. Another thing that we can do as man to help us out is I'm gonna come through here. This ain't been cut since August, but I'm gonna come through here and cut some of this stuff off and the clippings will actually feed the ground. They'll actually feed it and fertilize itself. Um, like this clover right here. Clover has nitrogen in it. So when I, when I cut that off, it'll release more nitrogen and help this stuff continue to grow. I know a lot of smart people, but I don't know anybody that could have created this goat, this species of animal, and let it work the way that it works. Now this that I'm explaining to you, you know, I know in America, we don't really eat a lot of goat. At least most people don't. I haven't ever, but I will if I ever get the opportunity. We ain't had a whole lot of luck with our goats yet. We're still learning. But this will ring true for cows and, um, and sheep as well. They're all kind of grazers. Um, a goat is more of a browser than a grazer, but same concept. They eat what's in the ground. And then we got a grain bowl for them over here. And I'm sorry for the footage. This is more about the message than the footage. We got a grain bowl right here. It's empty. They've ate it all. But what goes in that is stuff that other farmers have grown. Wheat, corn. I don't know what all kind of grain is, is in their mix of feed that I give them. But it comes from the ground as well. So to me, that's just an example that that God does exist. And we're gonna come through here. I got a lot to do today. I'm gonna clip the tops off all these, this, uh, this inside these fences and mow the rest of my property. And if you cut it, it'll grow it. If you mow it, it'll grow. If you want it to grow, just mow, they say. So we got old Laurel here in here with the goats this morning, uh, following me around. We're gonna plan on trying to breed her to her, her granddaddy kneeling up there on the hill um he's jealous that she's down here and he's not and i'll give y'all update on that and we'll see what we can do one more thing before we get going into our chores is don't forget that the snakes and the serpents will be there to try to drag you down to me this is another example that god's at, at work is because uh this snake is here for me to show y'all and mention that to y'all and this is the first snake that I've seen down by my house on this property in six years. Usually when we have hogs and the dog, they must keep them away, but uh, one of the dogs alerted me to it the other day and I came down here and took care of it. You gotta watch out for the snakes in the grass and the serpents because they're always there to, to pull you back and pull you away from God. All right, we got the yard part mowed around the house and stuff. Now we're gonna go inside the fence and cut just wanting to show y'all everything that goes into maintaining this property that way you understand a little bit of why I don't post as much about the dogs as more because they we only got two two bulldogs and a little Staffordshire Bull Terrier and a, another uh, mixed breed dog down here that we've had for years so we'll go down here and I'll show you this but this there's a lot that goes into everything out here is more than just the dog you know that that means uh i mean that in more ways than one so we'll go inside here all right there's our mixed breed dog i was telling y'all about i don't think i've ever mentioned him or showed him in a video but that's old that's old man size he's 12 13 years old he's he's the taking over the role of full-time livestock guardian laurel's in her kennel uh he's neutered so nothing to worry about he's been neutered for a long time but we got these uh, small paddocks clipped off at the top. And then uh, 
if anybody wants to know what brand mower to buy if you can swing it get you a skag simply the best as they say maybe they'll uh, pay me for that promotion but uh we got the goats in here now i'm gonna give them a little bit of grain footage is terrible i know come on old man we'll go over here to the billy goat all right we'll pour what's left into this billy goat something else look this billy goat we're we're battling uh something with him you know mange lice we've been treating him hopefully he's doing well but this just you know i'm tired of uh making everything seem better than it is a lot of people do it that's life on the farm that's life in general so you know i just i've tried to do the farm videos before more and they don't really get as much traction but this is what we do so this will probably be how some of the videos will go for now on uh for me to post i got to show a little bit of everything so we we got seven goats six nannies one billy ain't had much luck with the kids we've had problems with them ain't had too many survive we got laurel right up there kneeling up here and our little house dog we got a dozen chickens and we hatch chicks so next thing is we're gonna introduce uh kneeling down here to laurel because she's in heat and we'll see what uh what comes of that that's why she's in the kennel right now that's why kennels are always good no matter if you let your dog run all the time i could keep her inside this fence and i didn't mind keeping her up there with kneeling because that's who we're going to breed her to but it's best if you can supervise the tie and also up on the hill there there's two rottweiler males that come down here from time to time so we can try to keep them ran off and then the house back there has got some male dogs that sometimes come down here so we don't want no accidental breeding. The first sign that I see she's in heat, and I start seeing her bleed, she goes into her kennel. On days nine through 11, somewhere around there, we'll try to get a tie. We're about day six or seven, so I'm gonna see what she does. She may not flag him yet, but we'll see how it goes. So that'll be the next thing, but I gotta get some things in order before I bring them down here. And I got him, gotta get him moved. Because him and Neelan will not get along if there's a female in heat. I'll probably put him in here with the goats. And then uh, we'll bring Neelan down here to this area and see what we what we can uh, do. Stay tuned. All right, the wind might affect this part of the video, but we're going to take Laurel up here. Come on. To Neelan instead of bringing Neelan to her. All right. Let's see what we can do. We may be a little bit early on it, but won't know until you try i think i am a couple of days early actually we'll see what they do when we get in here all right they're off to the races doing their doing their mating ritual as i call it <laughs> she's flagging she is flagging already I don't know that she'll stand, but she's flagging. And for those of y'all that don't know what flagging is, it means that the, the female will actually move her tail to the left. Watch. To clear, basically to clear pathway to, uh, to her, uh, <laughs> to her female parts. We'll keep it clean. Uh, We'll see what she does here, which I wasn't gonna say anything. Vulgar, it's just, that's just part of it, you know. She's basically allowing access. That's how I put it. I was struggling to find the right words. But Neyland, he ain't too interested yet. I mean, he's interested, but we'll see. We'll see what he does. Let's see if I can get her to flag on video. That right there is a flag. That right there. 
I don't know if y'all could see it. I was looking at her versus the camera. Just the problem with these dogs is they both want to be right up underneath me. So, so she's sitting. I don't think that uh, she's standing for him, and you can see her tail move to the left. I don't think we're going to get a breeding today, but I'm going to stay in here with them, and if anything needs to be updated on this video, I'll update it. If not, thank y'all for watching. And remember how the beginning of this video started out. You know, just let Jesus into your heart. So he's knocking on that door, but there's only a door knob on your side. He can't open it for you. All right, hopefully this mic's picking up. We got an update. We got a tie to Neyland and Laurel. Uh, I'm trying to film. This is Laurel's first time, so she did good until I came into the picture. And she freaked out a little bit. So I'm in here trying to make sure she don't hurt him or herself. So hopefully nine weeks from now we'll have uh, we'll have a litter of pups. We'll try to do another tie uh, again tomorrow or the next day. I usually try to get two or three ties. So just wanted to give you all an update. Hopefully everything's uh, recording on this mic. But anyways, this is Daniel with Pride of the Southland Kennels. Until next time. Thank you for watching. All right, she's back to herself now. And I was always told, walk around with the dogs for a few minutes. Don't let them sit down. They just done tied. That's probably about a 45-minute tie. She's better now. She was just unsure of uh, what was going on. Of course, Neyland, he's ready for round two already. But anyways, mark your calendars. Nine weeks from today. Give or take a few days, maybe we'll have some American Bulldog puppies. For those of y'all that don't know, that's a grandfather, a granddaughter breeding. Uh, he's her grandfather on both sides. So now I will officially end the video. This is Daniel with Pride of the Southland Kennels. Until next time, thank y'all for watching.